Okay, Outsider. Wampoa Garden, a carnival of chrome and neon, rife with every manner of technology and artifice one can imagine. The entire area has the feel of a night market, save that chips are sold in lieu of steamed buns, and vendors hawk the latest drones rather than folk art. Something stalks these streets, hiding just out of sight. It stalks the Wampoan elders, leaders of the brand of the band of tech-savvy squatters that have claimed this neighborhood as their own. The streets smell of ozone and fear, and those Wampoans you pass in the MTR station have a haunted, furtive look in their eye. While the killer has struck only at the elders thus far, it may only be a matter of time before ordinary residents are menaced as well. Let's continue. Yet, 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 I don't got any extra guns, so let's go. Roll out! Oh man, I'm out of soda. Okay, let's improve my abilities. Abilities. Intelligence. See, she's got that. Fuck. Nine. See, it's gonna take most of what I got. Not gonna be able to get that. What can I get over here? Uh, there we go. With the quickness. The streets of Wampo Garden are slick with rain, glittering under the neon glow of myriad signs and holographic displays. The sky reflects the same glow, painting the white apartment blocks, the sickly orange of sodium street lights. The smell of grilling meat mingles with other rarer scents. Ozone, engine oil, and high-tech fabrication facilities. Thank God they didn't put and between all of those words for fuck's sake. They're learning. Despite the hour, there are plenty of people out and about. You can hear the calls of street vendors and touts. And touts? Yeah, there is touts. What the fuck's a tout? Urging people into their stores. Isabel wrinkles her nose, scowling darkly. She wraps her arm tightly around her chest, staring off into the distance. Is there a word for feeling nostalgic for a place you can't wait to leave again? I don't miss this place, but I miss the feelings I had when I lived here. Saudade? I don't know. Isabel shakes her head. No, that's not it. It's close, but... She lets the sentence trail off into nothingness, clamping her mouth shut for a moment. Isabel sighs heavily. This place seemed like heaven, after the walled city. Like the whole world had unfurled in front of me. Anywhere I turned, there was the promise of a good life. It turned out this place was just as crappy as everywhere else. Everyone was still in it for themselves. Gobbit claps a hand on Isabel's shoulder, who flinches and pulls away. That's the great lesson, is I'm serious. At the end of the day, life's a raw deal. You got yourself and a handful of friends, and that's it. Nothing else. Duncan casts a side look glance at Isabel and Gobbit shaking his head. You got some strange ideas about life. Sure, life's a meat grinder. Come on, there's got to be more to life than just surviving. Does there? What makes you the authority on that? Isabel waves a dismissive hand. I'm done talking about this, anyway. Isabel turns towards you and points down the street to your left. We're looking for the Wampoan elders. They're going to be on the Wampoan wa Wapo itself. That's the big ship down the street. That's the mall shaped like a boat, right? <laughs> Isabel, Isabel nods, lips pursed. That's the one. Somebody thought it would be clever to make a uniquely shaped mall. Oh shit. Can't really go anywhere. Can I, can I go? Ooh, I can go back here. What's back here? I don't feel safe here anymore. Streets be dangerous. Not a very big area. New park. Yeah, not a very big area. 
The one Poa. Let's go. Arcade. Computer stuff. Looks like a little store. Interesting. Elder Ng. Nig. Nig. Ng. Ng. I think it's Ng. This orc woman is festooned with small circuits, tiny trid screens and speakers. The trid screens display snippets of trid broadcasts from every corner of the world. The tiny speakers play counterpoint with a susurrus of voices speaking. Say, like, a plethora of voices speaking. Sephirothral? That's the elf language, and I'm probably mispronouncing it terribly. Punjabi, Kazakh. In other languages. Her expression is haggard and she fidgets with fidgets with her fingers as you approach. Welcome, welcome to the Wampoa, my friend. I'm Elder Ng. These are the elders Tang and Ip. Ng gestures to the elf and human who each incline their head respectfully. Thank you so much for answering our request for help. We had nowhere else to turn. Yeah, sure, whatever. Under Tang's skin, glowing tattoos writhe and change shape. Tigers become cranes and move to dragons. We're under threat! One by one, we elders are being hunted by some monster. As you may have noticed, when you arrive, there's been another killing just tonight. Did I notice that? Ip crosses his solid chrome arms. Holographic readouts dance constantly over their surface, displaying diagnostic information about their state. Operating temperature, servo pressure, and a variety of other minutia. He looks past you towards Isabel. The prodigal daughter returned once more. I didn't expect to see you back aboard the Wampoa in my lifetime, Isabel. When you disappeared, Elder Yatunde was very put out. I'm glad you're still alive. When you chose to walk your own path, I was disappointed. But I still understand why you had to leave. It pauses, tasting the air as he chooses the next words to care. I hope my lessons have helped you prosper. Don't expect to be... didn't expect to be back either. Work takes you places, though. Isabel shrugs. A moment later, she places a hand on her pistol, eyes trained on the Ips shoes. On the Ips shoes, huh? I don't cart this around for fun, Ip. The lessons kept me alive. Isabel blinks several times and looks up at her, at Nig Nig, her expression clouded. Where is Yatunde, anyways? I expected her to be here. Nig shakes her head sadly. She reaches out a hand towards Isabel, who shrinks away from it. She's dead. So were Gan and Nakamura and Tong. Just ki was killed just tonight. So much blood. We have to stop this from continuing. Isabel's expression remains impassive, but her knuckles grow white as her hands ball up into fists. That's... that's what we're here for. We'll stop the killings. Thank you, Isabel. And left... oh god, I can't say that. I keep saying that. Lifts a hand, wiping away the tears from her eyes. What can you tell me about... The oh god, more text! What can you tell me about the mur mur murders? They started two weeks ago. The first to go was Gan. You found him in his apartment, eviscerated. Nig, Nig swallows, grimacing the painful memory. He'd been torn apart. His head had been ripped completely off, and most of his skin flayed away. There was so much blood it took us a week to clean out his apartment. Tang nods, running his palms over his forehead. The rest have been the same. Always at night. Always dismembered. Each scene is like a nightmare. And every time, nobody sees anything. It's like a ghost. What happened to Tong? The same thing that happened to the rest of the victims. Evisceration and dismemberment. We sent a guard to keep people out of his shop, but he'll let you in. Ah, when did he die? Sometime early tonight. He locked up his shop, but Ip stopped by to ask him about some skill chips he had. The door was unlocked and inside... Mm, lifts her hands helplessly. She opens her mouth, but no words come out. Elder Ip. Seeing his inability to continue, Ip takes over. Inside. Looks like a bad horror movie. Horror sim movie, 2221. Just like all the other murders. It had to have happened after sundown, because I saw his shop was open, 
when I was on my way to get some noodles for dinner. Why didn't you call the police? The Hong Kong police force isn't welcome here. I've tried to force this out several times before. We come hunting for someone to pin a crime on. We do a lot of favors for local kings and triads. Handle their matrix security. Fix up their gear. Make sure they have access to the Hong Kong Shadowlands hub. We're too valuable a resource for them to lose. So they protect us when the HKPF or anyone else decides we're an easy target. They handle our physical security and make sure to send the message via the Matrix. The last time the HKPF made trouble, we started airing the assistant chief, chief's dirty laundry all over the trid. They got the picture and backed off. They made any enemies lately. Mm, shrugs helplessly. Not that I can think of. We keep to ourselves. We buy and sell technology. We're not mercenaries or criminals. We're merchants and deckers. And even if someone was cheated in a deal, this kind of response is unthinkable. Yeah, well, apparently somebody thought of it. Oh, loud noises as I adjust my chair. Whatever did this, it wasn't human. The violence and savagery, it's a monster. Whatever it is. Hey, humans are plenty monstrous. Oh, there you go. Elder Tang agrees. Plenty of metahumans are monsters, too. Mm -hmm. Just because it's horrible doesn't mean it's supernatural. What do you do? Isabel sorts derisively. They make the rules and kick people out who don't obey them. They're a bunch of petty tyrants. That's what. Ooh. You're being unfair, Isabel. Our laws are for the good of the community. Ting turns to address you. We keep the Wempo and its residents safe. We review trade agreements with outsiders to see if they're good for the community. We provide a guiding vision. Like a town council. Nah, I'll try not to defend them. I'm glad you understand. This community is fragile. The authorities bear us a lot of ill will. A single messed up could spell our end. I am the invoker of sprites. I commune with the spirits of machines. Ask them for blessings and pass those blessings on to the people here. I heal the sick and ensure the feng shui of our habitats is as good as it can be given our confines. Ah, uh, she's a shaman, that's all. She just got some cookie spin on it. Claims her token is some kind of all-encompassing machine god that lives in circuitry. Isabel pats her deck, looking at Ng. Ancient gods and ancestors are one thing. My deck, it's mine. I built it. The only spirits who are going in it are the ESPs I load it up with. Ng gives Isabel a look of deep sadness. Just because you can't see or touch a thing does not mean that it does not exist. Just because you do not believe in it does not mean it does not protect you from afar. I can touch programs either. At least I can prove they have an effect on the physical world. Your superstitions are just that. Bullshit. Isabel glances at you, jerking a thumb towards Tang. This guy treats drones like they're living things. Is that right? Elder Tank sends his arms, palms up, as you watch the attitudes there and shift into a complex mathematical formula. I am the first and glorious servo. I study patterns, repair memory machinery, and teach others how to attune themselves to the wonders of automation. The blessed autofab in my shop in Purview, where we make the drones we use and sell. As for me, I serve as a resplendent voltage spike. It smiles crookedly. That means I shoot people who try to screw with us. It's a fancy title for head of security. Well, that's all for now. It might be wise to ask the residents of Wumpoa Garden if they've seen or heard anything. After you've gone to Tong Sensory Carnival, they may have seen or heard things we have not. Good to know. Yay, a lot of more talking. No talking there. Nobody talking here. Can't get in there. Nobody talked to in there. Man, they said that people would talk to us, and nobody is here to talk to us. That's just a dead end. And nothing's in the shop. Well, looks like I'm going this way. Do, 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 do. Hmm. Let's see how this rolls. Porter Lamb. At your service, 
The elders told me that you'd be coming. Uh, they tell you about what happened to Tong? Uh, he got killed earlier tonight, yeah. Killed, huh? That's rich. Killed is when a BTL head sticks a knife in you for your cred stick. The cops put you put two in your chest for not kissing up hard enough. This is something else entirely. This isn't killed. This is slaughtered like a fatted calf. Watch yourselves. It's a goddamn mess in there. Tong Sensory Carnival looks like the scene out of a B-grade slasher sim. The cloying scent of incense hangs thick and pungent in the air, emanating from the small shrine in the corner of the shop. Unfortunately, it does nothing to cover up the reek of cloth, of death and clotted blood. Despite the ragged remnants of Elder Tong littering the floor, the rest of the shop appears to be in good order. Or at least at first glance. Nothing is broken, tipped over, or otherwise ransacked. As you're about to step further into the room, you glance at the ceiling and walls. Blood from Tong's body isn't just confined to where his remains lie. Drying blood is spread about the walls and ceiling as well. Ah, sounds like he exploded. Check out Tong's body. Pretty gross. Tong's body is a ruined mess. The destroyed ruin of his face is barely recognizable. And what is left of his body would best be described as savaged. All of his limbs have been torn off, and a pile of flayed skin lies next to the remnants of the Wumpoan elder. We got a predator! The Wumpoan's clothing has all but been reduced to rags and tissue by cuts and tears, apparently sustained during the flaying. At this point, the only thing holding what's left of his body into a semblance of human form is the hair-thin fiber optics of his cyberware. Gobbit puts a hand over her mouth. Speaking in an uncharacter uncharacteristically serious tone. Sweet heaven, Gremlin. I haven't seen anything like that since Auntie Wong tried to stash some crit sticks in a devil rat's nest. It takes a lot to turn my stomach. But we sure have a winner today. This is seriously messed up. I'll second that. This isn't murder. This is more like, I don't know, a feeding frenzy. If it weren't for the skin, I'd say Tong stepped into a goddamn mine or something. Ah, damn it. I'm missing stuff. Same in the body. Have got but a sense of the body. You're the boss, boss. Man, this is going to be unpleasant. Gabbat closes her eyes, taking a deep breath. After a moment, she opens them again and makes a strange, grunting noise. There's no fear here, Gremlin. No anger either, just this kind of satisfied feeling. Tong never saw it coming. Whoever did it was professional about it. Which is pretty odd because nobody's professional about eviscerating a body as far as I know. Um, you think it was a hit? I don't know why the killer was after Tong, but it definitely wasn't any kind of mindless creature or even someone particularly passionate. It was somebody who planned this and executed it, and was glad about it. I don't know. It kind of feels like it's just business as usual. God damn. That's some crazy business as usual. The walls are covered in splattered and smeared blood most of which is hardened into a crusty, congealed paste. Thick tracks of it run laterally. It looks like the blood had been deliberately smeared. Hey, Gremlin, I don't know a whole lot about science or all that, but I know that blood looks like when it hits a wall. This is not natural. Somebody's deliberately smeared blood all over these walls. See how it looks like it got paint? it's got paint trails? It's because somebody used tongs parts like a brush. Okay, so they painted his walls with blood. Why? Do I look like a psychologist to you? Maybe because they're a freak. Maybe they're one of those sick serial killers that sees their murders as art. I got no clue. All I know is that when normal blood looks like on a wall, and this ain't it. Some people have a bad grasp of art. I knew this guy from Quan Tung who used to make music out of a stray radio stagnant, static and panic button calls called it Crisis Wave. It was awful. Yeah, weird. Let's open that door. Do 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 do. Desk safe. Tong's desk drawers are open and the safe that's built into one side has been opened. Uh, it just sounds awkward. There's no sign of tampering and the green light next to the word unlocked is blinking. Whoever opened the safe did it with a key fob. Inside are several blank cred sticks, but no sign of any with money on them. Eh, it looks like somebody looted his stash. A guy like this wouldn't keep only empty cred sticks in his safe. Ah. 
check the bathroom. It's immaculate. It drains a ton. Yeah, it didn't exit through there. Simpson said at her time. This is a Yamaha 95000 V Simpson that is a device for mixing and mastering Simpsons chips. Several dry bays are empty and all of the chip, chip jacks are empty. Are empty and all the chip jacks are empty. God, awkward. I should say several dry bays, dry bays, and all of the chip jacks are empty. That's how you do it. This is not proper English. The screen is flashing a repeated error message: warning, a requested files cannot be found. Please return drives to bay and try again. Let's debug that system. Banging away at Simpson's keyboard, you manage to suspend the drive error warning for a time. Digging into the guts of the machine's recent files, you manage to kick it into diagnostic mode. While it's not as good as having access to the full system, maybe you can learn something anyway. Yamaha SimOS 5.23 System Diagnostic. Okay, core dump. The long debug spew that scrolls across the synth screen is filled with numbers indicating recent files, play links, keyframes, and assist peak levels. Based on numbers you're seeing, Tong Simpson has been hacked to remove the peak, controller levels from the chips he's been burning, the required operation to make BTL chips. The delta wave outputs for these chips push them dangerously into brain burning territory. The file catalog for the high peak BTLs indicates all the files and burn chips should be stored on the missing drives and whatever was in the empty chip jacks. Somebody cleaned out Tong's BTL stash. Well. Okie dokie. Well, 